When you can't make it to City Hall or the school board meetings, local journalists from Duluth News Tribune will be there to report the facts and get your questions answered. Local news works for you. Stay up to date at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Hello, Northlanders. It's Wednesday, January 11th. I'm Wyatt Buckner with your Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now, here's a look at today's headlines. Two men are charged with attempted murder after allegedly breaking into a Kenwood home and attacking three occupants in an apparent case of mistaken identity stemming from the theft of a phone charger. Tristan Jade St. Clair, 22, and Dustin Hawk St. Clair, 27, both of Duluth, were arraigned Tuesday in state district court on multiple felony charges related to the early Friday home invasion. Duluth police said a 53-year-old woman, 36-year-old man, and 32-year-old woman were hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities did not identify the victims in court documents or in response to requests from the News Tribune. Two of the victims were stabbed, while the third was struck over the head with a coffee pot, according to the criminal complaints. None of the victims knew the defendants, who allegedly were attempting to confront an unrelated party in another apartment unit. Police described the property as a, quote, single-family type home that has been converted to makeshift apartments, end quote. The bedrooms are occupied by unrelated tenants, some of whom do not know each other. Authorities said the full extent of the victims' injuries and future treatment needs were not clear as of the filing of charges Tuesday. The St. Clairs are each charged with aiding and abetting one another in two counts of attempted second-degree murder, three counts of first-degree burglary and one count of fifth degree assault. Dustin St. Clair additionally faces a count of threats of violence. Police said they did not know the exact relation between the St. Clairs, both of whom have criminal records. A bill authored by U.S. Representative Pete Stauber would limit a mining project's environmental review to three years. The bill would designate a lead agency to oversee the permitting process, set environmental review deadlines to three years, one year for an environmental assessment and two years for an environmental impact statement, limit the window lawsuits could be filed to 120 days after the permit is issued, the bill does not place a time limit on filing claims that the terms of a permit were violated, and re-add uranium to the critical minerals list. Stauber and other pro-mining advocates have said the Biden administration is hypocritical for signaling support for mining minerals needed for electric vehicles, while actively seeking to delay domestic projects like Twin Metals, the proposed copper-nickel mine near the Boundary Waters canoe area wilderness. They've also criticized the administration for striking deals to source minerals from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which has cobalt mines with well-documented histories of using child labor. The Biden administration has long signaled its intention to permanently restrict mining within the Rainy River watershed, returning to Obama-era restrictions that effectively killed the Twin Metals project but were subsequently reversed by the Trump administration. In June, the Forest Service released a study that said hard rock mining within the watershed would pose an environmental risk to the Boundary Waters. The document will be used by the Biden administration as it considers a 20-year moratorium, or ban, on mining within the Rainy River watershed. Minnesota lawmakers are moving quickly on bipartisan lines to bring state tax codes in alignment with federal code, a move that could save taxpayers more than $100 million. During the pandemic, the federal government enacted policies that affected the tax status of businesses and individual filers, including student loan borrowers and the hospitality industry. But because Minnesota hasn't conformed its tax laws to the federal code since 2019, some filers in the state may have missed out on some of the credits and deductions. The changes would mean Minnesota would give up about $100 million dollars in revenue in 2024 and 2025, and another $3 million or so in the following two years. Lawmakers of both parties in the Senate and the House are pushing to get the tax conformity bill to the governor's desk as quickly as possible, as tax season kicks off this month. The bill affects tax returns for 2019 to 2022, years affected by pandemic-era federal bills like the American Rescue Plan and CARES Act. Filers would have to submit amended returns for previous years where state and federal tax codes did not align in order to take advantage of the changes. The House of Representatives voted 132-0 to 0 on Monday to pass the bill, and the Senate is expected to take up the bill on the floor today. 
Now here's a look at your forecast, brought to the Woman Today 6th Annual Rosie Awards. Duluth area weather for today, generally cloudy, a few patches of fog, high temperature right around 32 degrees today, and uh, very light winds over the course of the day. Light winds will pick up out of the northwest tonight, gusting as high as 15 or 20 miles an hour. There'll be a slight chance of some flurries or light snow, turning a bit cooler with temps dropping into the upper teens. Mostly cloudy and a little bit breezy on Thursday with a high in the low to mid-20s. North winds around 10 to 20 miles an hour. And cooler temperatures will linger for the remainder of the week under mostly cloudy skies. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to the Rosie Wards for their support. Northland women are a driving force in our community. They are advocates, mentors, volunteers, and leaders. Nominate a special woman you think deserves to be recognized at thewomantoday.com or by email at dearrosie at thewomantoday.com. Nominations are now open and continue through January 31st. Reporting for today's episode was done by Tom Olson, Jimmy Loverin, and Alex DeRozier. Thank you for listening to the Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day and we'll see you back here tomorrow.